It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. I'm Ernie Johnson. With me, oh, you know him, Shaquille O'Neal. You know this guy, too, Kenny the Jet Smith. And in our matchup tonight, we'll see the Boston Celtics going up against the Chicago Bulls. For Chicago, they struggled in this matchup last season. Only one win for them through four games. They'd like to make a statement tonight. Tonight, two teams that have been very hot as of late. Shaq, when you're facing a team that's been on a tear, what's the best way to disrupt their rhythm? So you got to identify any kind of weakness and attack it, Ernie. <laughs> you got to attack it relentlessly, <laughs> like a pit bull bite. <laughs> wow. And you got to play good defense all the way through the clock. Well, that was nerving. But um, <laughs> great rebounding gives you extra, pos extra possessions. You just have to capitalize on mistakes. What is he doing? I wish I had an answer for all the times you've said that. It's game time in Boston as the crowds look to cheer on the Celtics. This is Kevin Harlan, and by my side, Chris Weber and Greg Anthony. From the sideline, Hall of Famer David Aldridge. And the Bulls looking for a positive start here on their road trip. This is a team showing a better record this year. Over last, this was their goal, and it's coming to fruition so far. Yeah, but checking out Chicago, yeah, here's a team that some people doubted coming into the season. Obviously heard all the chatter, banded together, and, and now they've strung together some great wins. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, the offseason moves, even the summer league, the preseason, what they've developed so far, it's working. Now let's send it down to David Aldridge, standing by from the sidelines. David? Thank you, Kevin. Well, Brad Stevens is one of the youngest coaches in the league. At the same time, he's one of the longest tenured coaches in Celtics history. Kyrie Irving said... He brings the ultimate unwavering confidence. Chill, but assertive. He demands excellence out of you. You want to play for him. Kevin? All right, David. Boy, Chris, how much fun is it to have basketball back? Talk about some of the things you personally look for early in a season. Oh, man. What I personally look for in the beginning of the season uh, is how guys develop. And a lot of that is body language. You know, are you putting your head down and dropping your head after a shot hmm. are you not running back on defense after a turnover these are all little things that show what you're thinking about you know I, I just kind of check out the development but again the body language is the guy playing hard through his frustration is the guy giving his coach eye contact in the huddle is he being a great teammate by encouraging guys I'm passing to an open player for a better shot and so those are the things that I look at and then again with the pace being at an all-time high I think now is a new golden era of basketball where you can have so much more fun because you are no longer held to rules of not getting out of the shot clock, not getting on the fast break. Coaches are now encouraging this style, so the game to me is a lot more fun. So hopefully as a rookie, you come in and you embrace this and just let it fly. All right, let's set the floor courtesy of Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go. So the Bulls five right now. Dunn and Levine are the guard set. Lowry Markinen is out there with Carter. And it's Hutchinson in at the three spot. Now here is Horford. Here's Brown. Six on the shot clock. Used the shot fake to create the angle, but couldn't get it to fall. Levine against Brown. Back to Levine. Dunn looking over the floor. And the foul called on Marcus Morris. That's his first foul. A foul right off the bat. You hate to pick up your first one so quick. Here's Dunn. Boy, was he something else against Dallas. Here's Hutchison. I like how Irving gets after it on defense. Using his speed to stick with this man and make life difficult for him. Loads it up for Horford. Oh, and just a soft touch on both ends of that pretty alley. I got to say, when he threw the pass, I didn't know where it was going. 
And here's Don. He'll bring it up for the Chicago Bulls. They want to keep it rolling here following the win against Dallas. Yeah, and fortunately for them, I, I thought the opponent's defense just never showed up. Uh, but I like that they attacked those weaknesses. They made them pay for a lackluster effort. Here's Markkinen. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact. And he'll go to the line for two. Marcus Morris picks one up there. Of the size of marketing. I mean, it's difficult to guard against. I mean, he uses it well to draw contact. Chicago shooting their first free throws here for the night. First free throw is good. Well, how about Laurie Markinen out of Finland? I love his game. Look, he comes from a family of athletes. Both his parents played basketball at a high level. I know he got his game from his mom. She told me that. But his older brothers both made the pro ranks. One in soccer, the one in hoops. His family, skilled. Gordon Hayward's checked in for Morris. And good on the second, so he makes them both. And Markinen, from a young age, would spend all day shooting in the backyard. This sounds like you. His parents set a rule. No hoops before 7 a.m. or after 10 p.m. <laughs> oh, man, where can you play then? I mean, hey, you want to play 24 hours. But, yeah, it was just like me. And he'd be out there practicing in sub-zero weather. Those Chicago winners shouldn't be a problem for him. Here's Irving following the three-point basket by Chicago. Pass to Hayward. Back to Irving. The basket good off the assist from Hayward. Irving's got his first points of the game. Love how Irving mixes it up outside, inside. He's effective at playing to his strengths. The Bulls have gone two or three here to start off the game. Outside, Levine. And good, and it takes a nice bounce off the right iron and down. Well, no matter what, he's always going to be one of the most dangerous men on the court. Now the pass to Horford. On the wing, Irving. They get a hand on it. Irving against Dunn. There's the three. And the Bulls, another three. Okay. Four for five from the floor right now. Wasting no time getting this offense rolling. Irving kicks to Horford. Tatum on the wing. Z-Webb, what a rookie year it was for Tatum. Never hit a wall. He only got better as time went on. I remember doing his games in college. I mean, the same thing that happened then. Second half of the season was stronger than the first. He has a maturity beyond his years, both mentally and physically. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. And that one falls for Tatum. Yeah, we talk about a coach who gets the most out of his guys and what he has to work with. I mean, none other than Brad Stevens. I mean, he's done it for years. First in college, now on the greatest level. And he makes both free throws. Well, he's not making any mistakes up there today. Another solid trip to the line for him. And here's Don. He'll bring it up for the Bulls. Pass to Markinen. Carter outside. On the wing, Levine. Lock at six. Fires the three. Rebounded by the Celtics. And talking about Stevens, many people were shocked when he received zero votes from his peers for Coach of the Year. Well, yeah, I think people just got used to uh, his style. Uh, and, and it's not just the great scheme that he has. He does a fantastic, a subtle job of motivating players and keeping everyone focused. Oh, this is the kind of start they were hoping for. Austin with the ball. Trailing here by eight and going against Chicago, their first meeting of the season. And looking back to last season, they won this season series 
as you'd expect. Oh, yeah, and, and we'll see what or, or if anything has changed this year. Maybe it's still a matchup of the haves and have nots. Or maybe the playing field's uh, a little more even. Zelics have been perfect at the line so far, albeit just two for Take two. A break. And they've Take had a break. really good numbers two all shot. season from the free throw line. That free throw, no good. Well, for so long, so many were wondering what Kyrie was thinking when he left Cleveland. What is clear now, though, is that Irving doesn't think about it and has flourished on his own. It seems that he really did just need his own team to become the player he's become. And he sinks the second. And for Irving, he has let more of his personality come out on and off the floor, Greg, now that he has his own team. Yeah, it really does feel like we are watching a new chapter in Irving's development as a player. Still has the great shot and handles that make him so deadly with the ball. And, and, and just visually, while the leadership is also evolving, he just seems more in control of his game and, and even more lethal as a player. And Jalen Brown was giving quite the compliment on his game from Draymond Green, who felt, Greg, that Brown was good enough to be an All-Star. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if I'd be fully on board with that assessment in terms of last year, but I do think he's well on Take his way to becoming an All-Star. His scoring and offensive impact continues to grow each year, and he's shown a great knack on the defensive side as well. Terrific two-way player. The sky is the limit. That free throw missing. And Brown is just an exceptional player. Really love whenever he shows off his athletic ability. Portis, he's checked in for the Bulls. And he's good on the second. See, we have a great defensive team last season. What's surprising is that the Celtics didn't create that many turnovers, though. Yeah, 23rd in the league in steals. Uh, they, they don't gamble a lot, but, but they are active and they're relentless. And they have a coach who makes great in-game adjustments. Pass to Hutchison. And some nice ball movement here by Chicago. Here's Carter. And despite that miss, a strong start for them offensively. Hayward with some nice D. Here's Tatum. Got a piece of it. And he's able to get it back. In the corner, it's Hayward. It's stolen by Carter. Levine against Brown. Dunn. That's good, and it's Levine with the assist. Nine points for Chris Dunn. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. And there's the call on Kyrie Irving. That's his first foul. And now only one away from being in the penalty. Now here's Dunn. He's got nine. And stolen by Hayward. Irving kicks to Hayward. The shot's good. Well, well, here's the thing. Irving draws so much attention from the defense. I mean, he, there's always a guy left wide open. Dunn passes to Carter. Portis with it. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Just five to shoot. Levine finds Portis. Done. Wide open. He fires. No good on the triple. And he finds a major hole in the D beyond the arc. He still can't cash in. Carter with the block. Pretty early to be over the limit. That foul situation is something we want to keep an eye on. Chris Dunn taking fifth overall back in 2016. Didn't break through in his rookie season with the Wolves. He's getting more opportunity here in Chicago. Looking at who's out there now for the Celtics. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for Hayward. Marcus Smart comes in for Jalen Brown. And it's Rozier in for Kyrie Irving. Here's Baines. Kicks to Horford.
and he drops in the way up off the glass. Horford's got his second bucket tonight. And Greg, you look at Dunn, it can take longer for point guards to develop in the NBA. Yeah, a great point. It's the most cerebral position in our game. Learning how to run an NBA offense is a challenge. Good news, though, is he's putting in the work necessary to figure it out and progressing nicely. Here's Smart. Chris Dunn making his last shot. Outside, Smart. Passes it to Rogier. Down low, here's Baines. The shot that time, not on target. And it's Chicago the other way. The pass to Hutchison, to the paint. And that basket pushes the lead to double digits. And now it's a 10-point Chicago lead. So the Celtics call timeout their first. Chris, your team's battled Kobe Bryant many times. Uh, name some of the players today who you think can compare mentally to, to the Kobe Bryants and the Michael Jordans, guys you play. Oh, wow. Well, well, Kobe says he's seen it in Kyrie Irving and, and the Greek Freak and a few others. Uh, hmm. I've seen it in Westbrook and how hard he plays and, and, and KD. And, and I, you know, I don't think Steph Curry's just this little nice, helpless guy out there on the court to shoot threes and turn around. He's <laughs> one of those guys, too, that just wants to put that dagger into your heart with a deep three late in the game. So definitely Westbrook, KD, Curry, uh, uh, those guys coming out. Aggressive coming out of the gate here, guys. Wow. Yeah, you got to love it. Everything's working. Offense, defense, already a big lead. And stolen by Tatum. Good on the short little jump shot. Attacking the painted area. That's where Tatum can use his height and length most effectively. Here's Levine. He had a big outing in that Mavericks game as well. To the inside, Portis. The second chance effort. Baines with the block. And now here's Rozier, the fast break chance. Tatum on the wing. That's good. And it's Rozier with the assist. And it's seven points for Jason Tatum. Yeah, and off the catch. Tatum now has a quicker shot release. Probably a little better balance as well. Fires from 14. Here's Baines. After two misses to start the game, he's on the board with that shot made. Yeah, and there it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great inside position. They get it again. That one drops for him. And the Bulls lead by seven. What intensity on the glass from Portis. A junkyard dog. <laughs> he worked so hard for the second chance opportunities. Rogier kicks to Smart. Inside. Inside, here's Baines, banked in off the glass. And they repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. Selden passes to Portis. Some nice ball movement by the Bulls. Cans it from downtown. Levine's got five. And off to an incredible start here early from long range. Smart against Parker. Over in the corner, Rogier. Outside Tatum. To the paint, stolen by Levine. And it's Jason Tatum with the foul. That's his first foul of the game. And the bonus will go to the free throw line. And not the guy you want to send to the line. He has been automatic. And he knocks down the first one. Zach Levine, a high riser. The two-time dunk contest champ making his return from that ACL surgery. He can be an explosive scorer. Lopez, he's checked in for Portis. And so Levine nails both of them. Yeah, drawing fouls and making them pay at the line. Celtics trail by 10. Rogier kicks to Baines. Rogier, the pass to Tice. Back to Rogier. Shot clock at six. Rebounded by Selden. And from everything you hear, Levine is a big-time gym rat, Greg. Yeah, you know, I think he's very dedicated to reaching his full potential. And with his shooting and athleticism, 
I think he's a great fit in today's game in terms of offense. He hits both from the stripe. Yeah, a lot of whistles here early, as well as foul trouble starting to be an issue. And here's Smart. 11 points for him in that last game against Portland. And equally spent as much energy on his D. I mean, four steals kind of tell the story. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. The Bulls leading by 10. Selden kicks to Levine. There's 138 left in the first quarter. He dishes it to Parker. The three. And Tatum pulls it down. And pushing it up, here's Boston. The shot that time, not on target. Good D by Parker. Up and in, off to an efficient start. Two for three from the field. And the defense looks soft early on. They've got to summon up a little more sense of urgency. The kick out to Tatum. Over Valentine. Takes the 12-footer and hits. Tatum's got his third bucket of the night. Of the height, the footwork. No wonder Tatum's knocked down mid-range from there. Selden, Rogier defending. Levine against Smart. Lopez passes to Valentine. Here's Selden. Parker trying to free himself up, and that one's good. Selden. And the Bulls lead by 12. And from the opening tip, they just crushed it. Yeah, you see it now on the scoreboard. Yeah, particularly on offense, where they've been completely in sync. Terrific first quarter. The Celtics have gone four of six so far from the line, missing a couple. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Blue shot. And the first one drops. Oh, the fearlessness by Rozier. That's what helps him earn the trip to the strike. Both good from the line that time. 23 seconds left in the first quarter of the game. Selden. Parker outside. Misses from close range. Wow, he just does everything right there except hit the layup. And so it's the Chicago Bulls going into the break with a 10-point lead. They're pounding the ball inside, and that's where they've gotten their best production tonight. We come back right after this. Al Horford was born in the Dominican Republic, and he talked about why he gravitated towards basketball instead of baseball. Coming from the place where, you know, baseball is what's driven to us every time. I mean, I started playing baseball. I didn't play basketball. I started playing baseball and, you know, just watching my dad play basketball, I just fell in love with the game. But people were still telling me, they're like, nobody makes it out of here, usually out of basketball. I mean, your dad was a very rare case. And, uh, you know, I just believed in it. Yep, wanted to follow in his father's footsteps. And, and what a career. Uh, college championships at Florida, an all-star in the NBA. I think he made the right choice. And if you're just tuning in, we've got a wide margin on the scoreboard, but uh, plenty of time left for a comeback. Looking at what we've seen for the Bulls, what do you guys think? 
For me, that defense in the first period, just tremendous shot blocking. Well, it's all about the rim protection because it's been fantastic. A big part of helping them build this early lead. Hayward and Morris, your small and power forwards. Rozier is out there with Smart. And it's Tice in at the five. That's the five to begin the second quarter for the Celtics. One shot, Irving's checked in for the Celtics. When you were playing on the road, obviously the fans would yell things and, you know, try to get under your skin. See, Webb, do you remember any instance when, when it really bothered you and, and, and took effect? Maybe when I would go home and play for the Pistons, I'd see some fan in the green and white, and maybe Steve Smith, my partner, paid him to be there. But, you know, the Michigan <laughs> State fans, you know, the gold blue or, or that type of thing. Or in Ohio, it's very funny, you know, in Ohio, if they want to boo, if they want to get the crowd pumped up, all they do is put a big Michigan Michigan M up there and the crowd will go crazy and boo. So Ohio, <laughs> usually my people are Ohio State and Cleveland, they always, you know, had something to say. No, but it was more like, you know, you suck, Ohio State is the best, you know, Michigan <laughs> State, you should have come here. That type of stuff. And you kind of look back, give a guy a wink, knock it down a jump shot, and put your fingers to your lips and just say, Shh, you don't want to get me upset. Let, let sleeping dogs lie. That's great. That's great. Okay, well, let's go down to David Aldridge for a report from the sideline. Well, Kevin, since the rise of the Warriors, we've seen a fair amount of soul-searching by the league's other contenders. There is incredible pressure to shake things up. Now, sometimes it can elevate a team, but we have often seen it also can tear a team apart. It can be fragile for sure. David, thank you so much. The Celtics making a switch here. Orford's checked in. Markinen, he's checked in for Chicago. On the inbound... And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. And looking at Jabari Parker, six foot eight, about 250 pounds. Greg, what's his best position? You know, I think he has a small forward skill, but with the way the game is changing, you could see him play some power forward as well. And I think his best fit might just be at the four because of the mismatch he can create. Horford. Puts the fade away right on the money. Horford's got six. Even though he's been stretched out this game, uh, Horford, uh, he still remains a solid mid-range jump shooter. Now, here's Valentine. Bended by Hayward. Parker kicks to Markinen. Five on the clock. Here's Selden. And again, no good by Chicago. Not pretty. You just got to shake off a miss like that. You're smart, and the whistle blows. It's going to be on Jabari Parker. Thank you. That's his first foul. Jalen Brown's checked in for smart. Two minutes now played in the second quarter. Here's Brown. Yes, and it's Irving picking up the assist. I tell you what, Brown is a powerful wing player. You, you like to get him the ball inside. And here's Dunn. He'll bring it up for the Bulls. They've held a 12-point lead early. Next up for them, the Bucks in Milwaukee. That'll be the second of this two-game road trip. He's been off target for the most part, but it hasn't held them back as a unit. Irving finds Morris. No good that time. Good D by Parker. The Bulls leading by five. Here's Hutchison. And he could not get that one to go. Out of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. In last season, the Bulls were very perimeter-oriented on both ends of the floor. Offensively, top ten in threes. Defensively, ten last in block shots. the first and the Bulls also had trouble last year getting to the foul line well it's because their primary scores were largely jump shooters I mean very little back to the basket offense and not enough driving to make up now here is Irving he's coming off a 31 point game against Portland All right, well his rebounding stood out too he gave them a big lift on the board the high post shot Jabari Parker comes up with the rebound Chicago leading 
And for those of you just joining us in the second quarter with about three minutes gone by. He kicks it to Markinen. Lock at six. Some nice ball movement by the Bulls. Dunn shots good. What touch on the deep ball. You can see Dunn becoming more confident in his long range shot. Now a timeout called by Boston. As the teams head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. Carter, he's checked in for Parker. And for a look at how the competition stacks up right now. These, the new power rankings, they tell a great story. You look at Chicago, they sink a little bit here in the rankings. Still, though, remaining in the top five. And, you know, the Celtics, they're right where they want to be. They're already competing for the top spot. It's going to be a season-long battle, which is exactly what we all anticipated. Now, here's Horford. Coming in off a 21-point game his last outing. Hayward, and plenty of contact on the shot. So, two free throws coming up. And the foul goes against Chicago. Nice job by Hayward attacking, drawing the contact, getting himself to the line. This is his first chance at the line tonight. Shooting two. And he knocks down the first one. Yeah, and Gordon Hayward is a player who's always found a way to add something to his game. Now he feels comfortable going at a defense either inside or out. Great strength when attacking the rim and can shrug off those defenders. Hayward hits them both. And Greg, you mentioned Hayward's strength. That and his ball fakes seem to be not as recognized as they should be. Yeah, I think Hayward has one of the better pump fakes in our league. Great deception with inside-out dribbles to create space. And the things he does well aren't immediately apparent, but Hayward's terrific fundamentals are what make him a great scorer. So it's the Celtics now. After Chicago, picking up a basket just moments ago. And hard to decide which is better, the pass, the catch, or the slam. Oh, there's no wrong answer. Sens <laughs> sensational alley -oop. And a tremendous Unleash Chaos replay coming to you courtesy of Under Armour, Hover Havoc. Markinen, good. And really, this is Markinen's greatest weapon, a three-point sniper with impressive range. Irving kicks to Horford. Back to Irving. Brown inside, over Valentine. And it's Brown missing. The Bulls leading by 11. Now, Valentine. No points in the game yet for him. Pass to Markinen. Over Horford. Markinen can't get it to go. He's going to have a tough time hitting that if he can't create a little more space for himself. Brown, good. Brown's got five now. Oh, you can't find much better shot than that. Chicago's gone two of four from three-point range so far in the second quarter. Valentine kicks to Dunn. Dishes it to Carter. Good work defensively by Morris allowing no space for the shooter to get comfortable. Just terrific defense. Yeah, that won't go on the stat sheet. Close to getting the block, but really, it had the same effect. And goaltending is going to be the call. So they get the basket there anyway. Just barely too late and, and catches it on the way down. He's already in the air there, committed, so can't fault him for going for the block. And a lot of noise coming from these fans after that call was made. Bobby Portis has checked in for the Bulls. Down against Irving. It's stolen by Carter. Here's Hutchison. And he uses the glass on the layup. Hutchinson's got four points in the quarter. And some guys just have a nose for scoring. And this one couldn't have been any easier. 
I mean, I don't know whether to say it's amazing or sad, but you're down double digits and you still allow an uncontested layup. Where is the pride? Where is your heart? Uh, not quite airtight defense right there, but his release was a little bit off on the jump. Pass to Dunn. And he gets the whistle for the three-second call. And a look now at the Boston Celtics' upcoming schedule. On Friday, they'll be matching up against Kyle Lowry and the Toronto Raptors. And then on Saturday, they'll be matching up against Rudy Gobert and the Utah Jazz. And guys, this is the kind of stretch of the schedule that you dream of. Winnable games at home against opponents you know you have a talent advantage over. It would take a lot for this team to not be successful over this stretch. Now a timeout called by Boston, fresh from a win against Portland. Yeah, and fortunately for them, I, I thought the opponent's defense just never showed up. Oh, but I like that they attacked those weaknesses. They made them pay for a lackluster effort. Bulls making a switch here. Levine's checked in. Irving looking for an opening. Out to Hayward from downtown. Good, and the assist goes to Irving. And it's seven points Hayward. This is where Hayward just gets better and better, squaring up off the catch. Here's Levine. Gordon Hayward comes up with the rebound. Celtics trail by 10. And that one's good, Irving. Irving's got five points so far. Love how strong Irving finishes. Awesome at fighting through the defense and sinking these shots. Dunn passes to Levine. And again, no good by Chicago. He had one three-pointer in the first, but still searching for that second. And Irving gets it to go on the assist by Hayward. Irving's got four this quarter. No, that's just an excellent possession. I mean, Hayward doing what he normally does, making a good decision with the ball in his hands. Dunn kicks to Carter. Outside Portis. And some nice ball movement here by Chicago. Dunn misses. And here's Hayward. He'll bring it up for the Boston Celtics. Six-point game. Here's Horford. That one wide left. He's still looking to get into a groovy score. It's stolen by Brown. And finished off by Brown. Body and agility. Rare, considering Brown's size. That's why he's always been such an intriguing prospect. On the wing, Levine. Outside, Portis. Back to Levine. And he goes big with the dunk right over Al Horford. Easy to see why Levine won the dunk contest in 2016. I mean, he has endless ups. Now, here is Irving. He has seven. Morris outside. To the inside. Brown. The second chance effort. Let's it go from deep, and it will go. And the Bulls' lead is cut down to three on the bucket from Kyrie Irving. And now he's taken a solid opening in the quarter and built on it here in the second. And stolen by Hayward. Floats it up for Horford. Oh, what incredible precision. Brown cutting the D to pieces in his pass. And it's the Bulls with the ball. 13 points was their biggest lead in the game. And boy, when you think about what the Bulls were in the 90s, Jordan, Pippen, Grant, Robin, I mean, a group that can suffocate you on both ends. Just four to shoot. From deep. Levine can't hit. Well, I'll tell you what, he's going to buy himself a ticket to the bench if he keeps shooting it like that. He has been putrid here this quarter. Brown, good. And Chris, talking about the Bulls dynasty, some people feel it was the greatest of all time. Well, that's a tough question. You've got Russell Celtics, Duncan Spurs, the Lakers Showtime. Uh, uh, let's include the Warriors of today. Uh, you know. I really don't argue about it because, you know, they can't go head-to-head, -head, unfortunately. Now, here is Irving. Ten points for him. Brown against Levine. Shoots from the baseline. Gets the front of the rim and out. Well, Chicago's gotten a lot of looks from outside tonight. Five of 12. 
Hutchison's shot is off. Boston trailed. Hayward finds Horford. And a dunk by Horford. You see how Hayward just made that pass? Uh, you got to say, uh, man, he's got some vision. There's a minute 40 left in the first half of basketball. Bean passes the court. Down again, Irving. And the foul called on Marcus Morris. That's his fourth foul of the contest. And that's his fourth foul. And we're not even at halftime. That is going to limit his playing time and his aggressiveness the rest of the game. Looking at who's out there now for the Celtics. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for Horford. Tatum comes in for Morris. Marcus March checked in for Jalen Brown. And it's Rogier in for Irving. They're capable of doing many things well. Levine has a good sense of when his guys are open. The Celtics on offense. They're on an 18 to 6 run. Now, here's Rogier. Taking a look at his stats, he's averaging around seven and a half points a game. Several lead changes going on here in the early portion of this game. Yeah, it reminds me of that cameo song, back and forth. Chicago trailing here. Levine kicks to Portis. To the middle, here's Lopez. Solid play in the low block, and that one's good. Lopez has got his first points in this one. But the arms of Lopez going forever, which is why he's able to create for himself. Here's Tatum. The kick out to Rogier. Off target with his three. Chicago's gotten cold from deep in the second quarter. Just two or six from long range. Portis can't get it to go. Uh, that's just a quick move to the 10 and an even quicker reaction by the D to stop. There's the three. And it's Terry Rozier with a three. Rozier's got seven. A oh, beautiful looking three ball from Rozier, really expanding his range. Smart against Levine. Over Smart. Levine can't hit. A steal. From deep. And that shot was up in time, but doesn't go in. And that'll do it for the first half. A competitive game so far. It's the Celtics up by two. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Thanks a lot. Kyrie, what were you all focusing on coming into the game tonight? So I come out with a you know intense focus and intensity that you know other teams can't match. Just doing whatever it takes to you know keep our tempo. Um, you know, guys are in a in a great rhythm when we have a great tempo. So just trying to get everybody involved and do whatever it takes to win. Well, we'll see if you can keep playing at your pace in the second half. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. All right, thank you, David. And folks, don't go away. After the break, we'll see you right back here for the start of quarter number three. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, it's good to have you back. You're watching the 2K Sports Halftime Show. This right here is Kenny the Jet Smith. This right here is Shaquille O'Neal. Me, I'm just Ernie. For Boston, it was a challenging first quarter. They were on their heels immediately, at one point staring at a 12-point deficit in that opening period. Moving on to the second quarter, big-time momentum shift as they came out blazing, wiping the deficit away and now lead by two. Kenny, what's your take on Boston so far? I was super impressed with their shot selection. I think that was part of the strategy coming in. They wanted to be patient with the basketball, move it around, and get high percentage looks. Obviously, that's going to be big. How about you, Shaq? What did you think about Chicago? Well, I'll tell you what I saw in the first half, Ernie. Three things. Saw defense, not enough pressure, but they can still win this game. They need to ramp it up. Was that two or three? Doesn't matter. You understand, Ernie. And that's a wrap for our halftime show. The third quarter just about to get started. And as we return, we get a look at the Boston skyline. Those drone cameras are really something. We've got second half action for you, and if the next couple quarters are similar to the first, this one could go down to the last possession. 
And you know, Chris Dunn has really been making it happen, guys. And through the first two periods, it seemed he got to the paint whenever he wanted to. Just a slasher's mentality. Yeah, and when you're trying to check a guy like that, you have to move your feet laterally, defensively. That didn't happen. And after a fairly even first couple of quarters, the second half could turn out to be a great one as both teams try to gain an edge. And tipping off the second half, here's Jim Boylan's five. Dunn and Levine are the guard set. Carter out there with Lowry Markinen. And it's Hutchinson in at the three. Now here's Tatum. Round kicks to Irving. Five to shoot. Passes it to Baines. Over Carter. Markinen pulls it in. And he's just a tough defender. Good positioning to get after that shot. Well, not all defenses are constructed to protect the mid-range area. Nicely done that time. Oh, man, what about the ascension of Jalen Brown? I mean, uber athlete, super smart, strong, long wingspan, and very raw coming into the league. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, guys, last season started with that horrific injury to Gordon Hayward's leg. Now, it's been a long road back for him, but he took heart in the encouragement he received, not just from his family, but from so many well-wishers. He said, you realize how lucky you are to have people from all over supporting you. Guys? David, I think everyone is rooting for his complete recovery. Thanks for that report. And the development period for Brown could have been longer, but he was thrust into a leading role. Oh, come on. He had to play extra minutes. I mean, those injuries. But most importantly, he had to create offense. Ball handling may have been his biggest weakness when he entered the league. He's already turned that into a strength. Bulls trail by six. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Here's Dunn. Gets it to go for bucket number eight. He's taken just ten shots. Uh, trying to master the pick and roll. Dunn, decisions like this definitely makes his coaches happy. The Celtics have gone two of three from the field to start the second half. Irving dishes to Bain. Horford against Markinen. Here's Irving. Yep, that one goes in there. Irving's got the lead back up to six now for the Celtics. Nice and steady so far in the second half. They're three for four. Bean passes to Markinen. Back to Levine. Carter outside. That one a little long. And, the, and they're controlling the boards, Kevin. That's plus five in that category. And a dunk by Horford. Well, well, the reason Horford is scoring the ball at a consistent clip, it's because of his shot selection. Efficient. He's so good at taking his time and letting the game come to him naturally. Here's Levine after the basket by Boston. Arkin in with it. He has five. Dunn kicks to Carter. That's in, coming off an assist from Dunn. Dunn's got his sixth assist on the night. What unselfishness from the young guard, uh, Dunn. Uh, he, he's making more of an effort to, to distribute the ball. Now here is Orford. 12 points for him. And out of bounds as the Bulls gain possession. And here is the shot chart as we see how things are going for Dunn. And, and really what jumps out to me about this shot chart is just how aggressive he's been went on the floor. I mean, he's doing everything he can to get as close to the hoop as possible before putting up that shot, and it's worked out in a big way for him and his team. Now, here's Markinen. And he can be counted on to put some points on the board every night. He's averaging right around 13 and a half points a game. Done against Irving. Done. Misses. The movement and the shot selection is with him, but you can't hit them all. Brown dishes to Irving to the inside. It's all in by the Bulls. Markinen's got four rebounds in this game. Bean passes to Hutchison. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. How about Zach and Bean signing a big new contract this summer? Listen, that ACL injury he had, oh, that, that's in the rear view. Obviously a lot riding on his health and return to form, but he's put in the work. Two shots.
first one falls for him. And Levine seems to be at full strength. His vertical leap testing even higher, if we can believe that, even higher, Chris, than it did in the pre-draft combine. Well, he's a hard worker. His scoring efficiency lacked a little bit last season, but he was trying to get his game right after injury. Look, we know his potential as far as scoring that ball. And so Levine nails both of them. Yeah, and you think about big transitions. Isaiah Thomas was a soldier uh, for the Celtics, got traded for Kyrie, and then Kyrie came in and, and, and just made all the fans fall in love with him. Now, here's Brown. He's got 11. Irving kicks to Horford. The kick out to Tatum. The shot's good on the assist by Horford. 14 points for Jason Tatum. They've leaned on him tonight, and he's delivered with some great shooting. And for the Celtics, lots of transitions last year for sure. Yeah, and with all the injuries, it was uh, you know, next man up. Tatum in for Hayward, Rozier uh, in for Kyrie later in the season. I mean, Brown went from raw athlete to dependable score. Yeah, just a solid job on the backboard. They are really controlling the inside. It's good. And they're forcing the ball inside, and it's working like a charm. Hutchison passes to Parker, and it's Jason Tatum with the foul. That's foul number two for him. Some changes for Boston. Morris comes in for Al Horford, and Marcus Smart is subbed in for Brown. Markinen kicks to Levine. Here's Hutchison. It's deflected. The long arm of the law. Tatum prohibiting that shot from ever having a chance. Parker's shot is off. Celtics leading by nine. Here's Smart. There's the basket and make it a double-digit lead. Smart's got his second basket of the night. Every time they get scored on during this run, it's come from inside the paint. And the first time out of the game called for Chicago. And when the Celtics traded out of the first overall pick in 2017, you know, many Greg thought they were settling for Jason Tatum for team needs. But he might be the best overall player in that draft. Listen, the Celtics said they would have been fine taking Tatum first overall, and I believe it. I mean, Tatum looks like he could be a superstar very early in his career and does everything at a high level and is already a terrific shooter from deep. Plus, he just has a poise and an air about his game that speaks of superstar. Showing assertiveness inside. I mean, you got to commend the smaller dumb for being strong down there. These are his third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And the first one drops. Uh, how about the point guard position? A lot like the quarterback. You need a team to put the ball in your hands and trust you to run the show, especially down the stretch. Last season, the Bulls handed Chris Dunn the keys. He seized the opportunity. And he makes both free throws. And Dunn, the fifth pick back in 2016, voted by his fellow draftees as the favorite to win Rookie of the Year. But, Chris, it took until year two in Chicago for him to break through. Oh, yeah. I mean, this game is all about getting better, finding the right situation. He still has to become a little more efficient as a player, cut down on his turnovers, shot his me. shot making abilities a little bit. But he's delivering on his potential as a two way player. I mean, when you watch Marcus Morris, I mean, he's been around the league, he understands how to play the game. Sometimes you just need to be put in the right system. It's just timing. That happened for him last season. And he knocks down the first one. And when you give Morris some freedom on the offensive end, he can carry you through long stretches. Kevin, he's a terrific shooter. I mean, from standstill, off the dribble, back to the basket, it really doesn't matter with him. The other thing he gives you, tremendous toughness. He likes to mix it up. He won't back down from a challenge, I'll tell you that. And Morris drops them both. While the shooting of Morris provides his team with his crucial, just a real valuable part of this team. Dunn dishes to Levine. 
Parker looking around. It's stolen by Morris. Three on three. Irving for three. Yes, once again, it remains perfect. Six attempts and six hits. It's no wonder why they're in front when you take into consideration that he's been perfect from the field so far. That's in, and the Celtic lead is cut down now to just 12 points with the basket from Markkinen. And really, Markkinen isn't just an outside threat. He's more than capable of capitalizing inside. Now, here is Irving. 15 points in the game. Inside, tries it from nine. Tice. Second shot opportunity. And here's Morris for three. And it's Chicago with the rebound. Levine's got five rebounds tonight. Here's Parker. No good. Good work defensively by Morris. He'll be beating himself up if they can't come back because he is not carrying his weight at the offensive end. And it's Jason Tatum with the foul. And that'll be his third foul so far. Gordon Hayward's checked in for Boston. Rozier comes in for Kyrie Irving. Robin Lopez is checked in for Chicago. Portis comes in for Wayne Selden. And so it's Parker with it. He'll bring it up for the Chicago Bulls. It's stolen by Morris. Rozier against Dunn. Hayward from outside. And there's a whistle. That goes on Terry Rozier. That's foul number two for him. Al Horford has checked in for Boston. Bulls trail by 12. On the wing, Levine. Lopez finds Levine. Doesn't go that time. Now the Celtics take it the other way. Rozier for three. Knocks down the three ball. Rozier's got 10. He might not have the long range ability of some other guys, but he will knock down open ones like that. Dunn passes to Parker. That's in, coming off an assist from Dunn. Dunn's got assist number eight here in this one already. Celtics leading by 12. And here's Smart. Five points in the game. On the wing, Morris to the inside and the dunk by Horford oh, don't get in his way Horford not to be denied when he gets in that close well Chicago has gone one of three from downtown since halftime Rozier against Dunn kicks it to Lopez down low here's Levine Parker great positioning on the putback that is really good work there on the offensive glass. Boston's gone 7 of 11 from deep tonight using the three-pointer to their advantage. Horford against Lopez. Morris outside. Back to Horford. Over Lopez. That's good from Horford on the assist by Morris. 16 points for Al Horford. Bulls trail by 14. Here's Dunn. 22 points for him. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. And with the Celtics' movement on offense last year, Chris, it was a surprise that they finished in the bottom 10 in field goal shooting. Uh, well, they lost a couple premier shot makers along the way. And, 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 you know, there's movement with the purpose. Sometimes that's where the Celtics, uh, they were lacking. Good on both. And even though they're down, they are putting on a show at the free throw line. Celtics leading by 12. Smart kicks to Hayward. The dish to Morris. That one off the back iron and out. And that's the shot you want to create they just can't get it to fall well, that just shows you can do everything right sometimes but still get the wrong result now here's Parker he's got 13 and again Chicago no good smart goes in Jabari Parker comes up with the rebound Parker's got six rebounds here tonight and a wide open look for Portis and Rozier pulls it down Boston's gone three of five with the long ball since entering the second half. Out to Morris. 
The shot's good on the assist by Horford. Morris has got four this quarter. Uh, terrific use of the catch-and-shoot jumper for Morris. Catching the deep flat-footed and torching them as a result. Time called here. The Bulls decide to talk it over. Yeah, he, he's got to make some adjustments here. Just too easy to score in the lane against them right now. Well, well, I think the first thing they need to talk about are the rotations. There's a lot of miscommunication out there. And while we've got a chance, let's check out the stats for Zach Levine. Getting around 24 points per, four assists, and three rebounds. With him, you get so much, but his ability to lead the way with his scoring, probably his best attribute. Oh, an offensive juggernaut. I mean, he can just beat you in so many ways. You got to give it up for him. Now, here's Portis. He provides a good amount of offense for the team, averaging around 11 and a half points a game. Levine against Smart. Shot clock at five. Levine dishes to Lopez. And they'll turn it over. Could not get off a shot. 24 second violation. A chance here to assess what parts of the four the attempts have been coming from as we look at the shot chart for Boston. And when you're riding on the upper end of the conference like these guys are, you usually have an excellent distribution of how and where you get your points. And these guys have a very effective offense, getting it done inside, outside, and from mid-range as well. Lopez against Horford. To the paint and stolen by Portis. And the call will be against Al Horford. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. He's off on the first. Carter, he's checked in for Chicago. And he sinks the second. There is one interesting stat for the Chicago Bulls, C. Webb, and they're still the only NBA franchise to win multiple championships and never lose an NBA Finals. Wow, that's just an amazing distinction. I mean, a testament to the clutch play of Jordan when they did make the finals and, and a reminder of how hard it is just to get there. Yeah, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. 130 left to play here in the third. Dunn passes to Carter. And there's a whistle. That goes on Terry Rozier. That's his third foul so far. Bonus situation in effect, so we'll head to the free throw line for two. Oh, take a break. Take a break. Two shots. That's good from Carter. Actually, Chris, one of the shorter teams last season. The Celtics made up for it with excellent athleticism and length, wingspan. Oh, yeah, you think about it. Jalen Brown measured 6'6 in height but had over a 7-foot wingspan. Rozier is smart. And, and, you know, and they might not be the tallest guys in the world, but, man, they play big. Now here's Smart. He has five. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. It's going to be on Wendell Carter. With a guy as strong as smart, tough to contain him without fouling. If you play straight up and down, he'll go right through you. And no doubt that Marcus Smart is one of the better defenders at his position. Quick feet are complemented by that strong frame, and he just digs in and, and against would-be scorers and just never lets them get comfortable. And that one falls for Smart. And Greg was Smart. When he's off the floor or injured, you notice just how it changes the team's defense. Yeah, I mean, the, the defense overall just seems to have less bite, less edge, less toughness without Smart. And, and the way he plays, you feel like he is looking to make a play on defense rather than just trying to slow his man down. Uh, great at taking charges and forcing turnovers. He is truly the catalyst of their defense. See, Webb, if there were ever a player where stats did not tell the whole story, 
it would be Marcus Smart. Yeah, I mean, if you look to his line every night, uh, you'd think he was just another role player. But Smart, he's a difference maker. Tough, physical. I mean, he makes winning plays. Bucket is good. Smart's got his third bucket of the night. And that bucket adds to what has been a big difference in points in the paint between the two teams. Levine kicks to Portis. Solid play in the low block, and that one's good. Portis has got six. And, I mean, what can you do? I mean, when Portis makes these hard interior shots, the defense feels lost. Rozier looking around. Inside. Oh, and that one, no question, powered it down. Such incredible hops for a center. Look, it allows him to hold his own against any other five in the league. Down against Rogier. Dunn up top. He's got 22. Parker outside. Basket good. Parker's got 10 points here in the second half. Defensively, this is what you know. He's coming off a hot game and looking to keep it rolling. Yeah, but here's the problem. They play team ball. So if you pay him too much attention, that just leaves other guys open and it's too difficult of an adjustment to make. Al Horford getting it done for Boston. Willing his team to a successful quarter performance, he seemed to stop at nothing to push the momentum. And don't go away. We'll be right back. How about a look at today's State Farm assist of the game? And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them, and what a beautiful feed. I mean, well, if you're the coaching staff, I mean, you're pumped up. This highlight will not only make it on the TV, it'll make it into the film session tomorrow. And as we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same from the first three quarters. Brown and Hayward, the duo at forward. Smart is out there with Terry Rozier. And it's Morris in at the five down low. That's the Boston Five. Here's Hutchison. Morris with the rebound. Morris has got six rebounds now in the game. The shot's good from Gordon Hayward. Yeah, that's the third bucket in a row from the pay. This defense needs to clog those lanes in the middle. Dunn kicks to Levine from past the arc. That's in, coming off an assist from Dunn. Dunn's got assist number nine now. Wow, what an effort here tonight. So Rogier will bring it up for the Celtics. At one point, they led by 16. And that's out of bounds. Boston will retain possession. One minute now into this fourth quarter. Hayward outside. And again, Boston with the triple. The assist totals, Kevin, just continue to grow. They're way ahead in that category. Ball movement has been flawless. Here's Dunn. 11 feet out, and he hits it. Dunn's got 24 points. Uh, you at least got to honor Dunn's Jay. I mean, he's more than capable of sinking it in from those in-between spots. Rogier, the pass to Smart. Hayward outside. Over in the corner, Rogier. And the Celtics hit again from deep. He's not their first option too often, but he can hit the three when he's on. Dunn kicks to Carter. Parker passes to Hutchison. Some nice ball movement by the Bulls. Dunn misses. It's only a matter of time until this three-point shot comes back to him. I mean, he knocked down two threes before halftime. Nothing so far here in the second. Rozier against Dunn. Rozier, the pass to Smart. Down to five on the shot clock. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. And a chance now to look at the schedule for Chicago. They'll be matching up against Eric Bloodsoe 
and the Milwaukee Bucks. Then on Saturday, they'll be facing Kawhi Leonard and the Toronto Raptors. And it's going to be home game after home game after home game for this group. So they got a great chance to string together a number of wins given how strong they've been playing. First free throw is good. Well, despite finishing with only 27 wins last season, the Bulls put up more shots than any other team in the NBA. Yeah, they were first in field goal attempts, but only 23rd in makes. That's why they were last in field goal percentage. But this is what you get with so many young shooters. Jason Tatum, he's checked in for the Celtics. Irving comes in for Ogier. At six foot four, 220 pounds, Marcus Smart might be the most physically imposing point guard in the league, especially with his fiery approach to the game. And there's the call on Kyrie Irving. And that'll be his third foul so far. We're in the fourth quarter here, just under two and a half minutes gone. How done. In the corner, it's Levine. Just five to shoot. Over smart. Got it. Nice one there from Levine. Uh, it's encouraging whenever Levine connects from mid-range. I mean, he's showing he wants to get better from it. Irving kicks to Morris. Outside, smart. Back to Morris. And the pass to Hayward. Over Carter. Misses off the left iron. That's exactly how you have to defend him. He's a guy that the D needs to be aware of at all times. Levine up top. Done outside. Launches it. And Boston with the rebound. Morris has got his seventh rebound of the game with that last one. Fourth quarter of play, and over three and a half minutes have gone by. Here's Irving. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. He's one of today's great clutch performers. That's, that's Kyrie Irving. Look, think about this. In 2016, game seven of the finals, he hit the pivotal three with just 53 seconds left. And that's just the most famous of his end-of-game accomplishments. And that one falls for Irving. The challenge with defending Kyrie, Chris, is how to prevent him from hitting those game-changing shots. Yeah, how, how do you check Uncle Drew? He has the range from deep. There may not be a better ball handler in the game. And he's a tremendous finisher in the paint. He's a triple threat. Al Horford, he's checked in for Gordon Hayward. Both free throws, good from Kyrie Irving. Well, the former number one overall pick. Tremendous success early in his career. Irving continues to find ways to improve. Time out, time out. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Sorry. Too many empty possessions right now. They need a basket. Chicago calls timeout. Al Horford with a strong contribution so far in this one. And he's been taking it to the rack all game, and they haven't been able to contain him. They have to put up better fight on the inside. Celtics on D. Levine, the bounce pass. Dunn passes to Markinen. Back to Dunn. Well-timed pass, and he goes straight to the bucket for the layup. Dunn's got four points in the quarter. Have to be excited for Dunn. I mean, it seems like he can't miss from anywhere now. Moving against Dunn. Now here's Irving. Morris inside, defended by Carter. Good work defensively by Carter. Oh, it's been a rough game for him, but it won't sting too bad as long as they hang on to the lead. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. Stripped away. 
Pass break. Here comes Chicago. Fires from 14. That one drops for him. Celtics leading by 15. Irving with the ball. And, and that fourth foul, guys, might force him to scale back the aggression from a defensive standpoint. He does not need, nor does the team need, number five. Here's Irving. To the middle. Nine feet out. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. It's on Lowry Markinen. Now that's just sound fundamental basketball from Horford. Just working the D and fooling them with their effective fate. And if there was ever a guy who was more than what his stats say, it's Al Horford. Won't have nights where he drops 50 or carries a team with a shot blocking, but you ask anyone he's played with and they'll tell you he is a perfect teammate. The first one falls. And the big man who compete against Horford had nothing but respect for him, Greg. Well, it is why he's been selected as an all-star by his peers and, and, and why guys like Embiid Im admire his game. I mean, Horford does all the small things on the floor you need as a big man. He's so humble. He, he just goes about his game and makes his team better in every facet. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, I mean, Horford does a great job of keeping this team together. A glue guy, high IQ, teammates love him. Then he's capable of stepping up big when it matters most. Oh, power flush with a long hang on the rim at the end of that. that could be, you know, that could be a catalyst for him. It really could. Down against Irving. Floats it up for Horford, and the dunk by Horford. But that's all you have to do is lob it up. Horford is effective at finishing with the alley -oop. And that was an unleashed chaos moment indeed. What a spectacular play. Sponsored by Under Armour Hover Hat. And talking about Horford, some people criticize his production, Chris, but his contributions go well beyond the stat sheet. Oh, you're so right, Kevin. He gets a great read every time down the floor. On both ends of the floor, he can orchestrate the offense and he can finish in a variety of ways. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. Morris. Rebound by the Bulls. That's tipped. And it goes out of bounds. Uh, last touch by Irving. Done outside. He kicks it to Levine. Wing shot on the way. Shot is good off the back rim and in. Levine's got 11 in the second half. And so it's Irving with it, bringing it up for Boston. The lead is 15. Pass to Smart. To the paint. To the paint. That's good from Horford on the assist from Smart. 24 points for Horford. Oh, nice look there from Smart. Finding the open man. They get a hand on it. Here's Levine. The shot goes down. Very quick possession right there. Taking things into his own hands. He's been a beast this quarter. Pass to Horford. Pass to Morris. That ball is good for another field goal. His sixth. He is six for nine on the stat sheet. Uh, what I like about Tatum, he moves his feet well, understands angles, and he plays more physical than advertised. Pulls up on the elbow and all around the rim that time before dropping in. That's 28 points for Chris Dunn. And the Celtics with possession here. 15-point game. Irving drives in. It's good again in an excellent 7-for-8 shooting night so far. 
I love the aggressive mentality. Irvin is terrific at pouncing on any available lane to the basket. Irving with the steal. And the wide open shot for Morris. He clangs that one off the back iron and down it falls. Moving it around. Eight of their last ten coming off assists. Levine kicks to Markinen. Back to Levine. Shoots the three. Rebound Boston. Morris has got his eighth rebound here tonight. Here's Smart. It's deflected, and they get it back. Nice ball movement by Boston. Bounce pass for Morris, and out of bounds as the Bulls gain possession. Cheap turnover. you, you got to make sure your target's ready for the pass before you let it go. Some changes for Boston. Gordon Hayward's checked in for Jason Tatum, and it's Brown in for Marcus Smart. Dunn kicks to Markinen. Outside, Levine. Here's Carter. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Well, he's not going to back off when he's down. I mean, when he's got a chance to attack the basket. And here is Irving. Down low. And stolen by Dunn. Inside. Here's Carter. That one doesn't go. Good work defensively by Horford. And physically, there's no doubt they've been the stronger team. A plus 10 rebound advantage tells you all you need to know. Morris finds Irving. Here's Horford. Stolen by Markinen. Done against Irving. Dunn passes to Carter. And here is Markinen. Knocks down the three ball. And that's the confidence his teammates want to see. Marketing is adept at firing off the pass. Hayward kicks to Horford. Shoots over Markinen. Offensive rebound. Yep, that one goes. 14 points for Gordon Hayward. Love the grit on the offensive glass. Those are just effort points. Bean passes to Markinen. Done outside. Over Irvin. Dunn misses. Celtics leading by 16. Horford kicks to Brown. A shot's good on the assist by Horford. Horford's got his fourth assist in this one. Just terrific determination. First, compiling the lead and now building on it. Oh, man. This is late in the game. It's tough for a team to come back. Everything has to fall into place. On the wing, Levine. Carter outside. Shot clock at six. Jacks up a three. Al Horford with the rebound. Austin's gone two for two from three-point land to start the fourth quarter. And tonight's battle is going to end with a very clear winner, leaving nothing to chance. Impressive win for Boston. When you shoot this well from three-point range, you're really hard to stop. The defense didn't rotate out fast enough to stop the hot shooters. Exactly, Kevin. They were lethal from deep. And so that moves their record to 11 wins on the year. And this is a great way for them to kick off this season series. Two more games ahead, and they've taken the mental advantage with this win tonight. And guys, one of the steady and outstanding players putting in another impressive performance. It was a big-time outing for Al Horford. The energy he played with tonight was amazing, and it paid off the most on the glass where he dominated the rebounding stats. Denzel Valentine, another tough, high IQ player, Greg, out of Michigan State. Yeah, four-year player for the Spartans. He knows how to play the game of basketball and has the versatility to impact the game in a variety of ways. Kyrie Irving, he's checked in for Boston. One shot. That's good from Valentine. See, Webb, I think of when you entered the league and how much the league has changed since your entry and your mind going back to your rookie year. I'm sure you can count many ways that the NBA has improved the game. Yeah, and the NBA to me has always been a step ahead. It's been a leader 
as far as where sports in general should go. I mean, we're truly a global game now. I mean, just imagine where the game is going to be in 20 years. The growth of overall player salaries, the value of franchises. And to me, again, the biggest improvement has just been the evolution of players. It's been thanking a guy like Larry Bird, who was 6'9", shooting threes. And today we have Kevin Durant, seven foot shooting threes is is players getting better the dribbling of isaiah thomas back in the piston days to the dribbling of curry kyrie john wall today it's it's the evolution of players to me that's been so exciting along with the group growth of the league overall And that's good as he hits both of his shots. 59 seconds left in the fourth. Here's Archie Diakono. Rozier defending. Here's Selden. Good on the three-point shot. And guys, you got to ask, where was this effort when it mattered? The game's over now. Oh, yeah, this is a nice run here, but too little too late. And deep down, I think they know it. Irving finds Baines. And there's the pass to Tice. Parker with the steal. By himself. And the dunk by Parker. And that's how you make a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other it, end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, if I, <laughs> if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant mm -hmm. offense. Well, well, hey, fellas, that's just like it's supposed to work. I, don't give the D a chance to set up. Now eight seconds separating the two clocks. Let's it go from 11. And it's Rozier missing. Here's Zeldin. He's covered by Irving. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. And the first one at the line is good. Shots good from the strike. Seven seconds left in the fourth quarter. And so it's Boston easily grabbing this one. Some good moments throughout this one, but they had the clear advantage down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the way they executed on both ends of the floor completely under control for the vast majority of the game and whenever there was a misstep they just didn't allow it to fester and that's why they're going to walk away with the win it's time now to go courtside as we send you over to david aldridge from the sideline david take it away thanks very much Kyrie. nice win tonight what was your thought process coming into the game uh you know i was just going out there trying to compete on every play uh trying to play as much defense as possible uh, you know, just sticking to our game plan. We had a game plan going in and we executed. Got it done at both ends of the floor, Kyrie. Thanks very much. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David, thank you. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Chris Weber, Greg Anthony, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.